That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. All right, so the daily dose of stupid today, it actually does have to do with taxes because, as you recall, yesterday was tax day, and I did notice an interesting trend on Twitter. When I was going on Twitter, I noticed that a lot of the posts that were coming from the left, a lot of those posts were basically based around the idea that the taxes were unpopular. So the the tax cuts that went into place, uh, this isn't the first year, it's the second year, but the tax cuts that went into place that were led by the GOP, that were signed into law by President Trump, even though it wasn't a very big tax cut, it was still a tax cut. The left continues to try to paint this as something that only helped millionaires and billionaires and the super wealthy. That is the contention that they have, and that is the narrative that they continue to try to push, despite the fact that there's really not a word of truth to it. And I'll, you notice that any of the facts or statistics that they use to try to back up their points all had to do with something completely subjective. For example, one of the ones that I saw is how many people are unhappy with the tax cuts. Yeah, well, whether or not they were unhappy with the tax cuts has very little to do with whether or not the tax cuts actually kept more money in their pockets. You'll see they do this with healthcare all the time. Bernie Sanders, so, uh, he touts this all the time, even though it really doesn't make any difference. He says, well, there are so many Norwegians or Swedens or uh, people from Finland that just absolutely love their universal health care. Yeah, well, they may be satisfied with it, but our survival rates for things like cancer are still higher. By looking at objective standards, our medical system is still way better than anywhere else in the rest of the world. We have more innovation. We have more access to care. I mean, it's by anything objective, you will quickly see that what they're saying doesn't make any difference. And so they constantly have to pivot to and try to put a focus on these completely subjective measures that really don't make any difference. You're not looking at results. You're looking at what people feel about it. And that unfortunately stays true to the overall Democrat worldview, which is people's feelings matter more than facts. They matter more than results. But if you're looking at the actual taxes, the truth is the vast majority of people did see a tax cut and more working families got to keep more of their own money. And Senator Kamala Harris was no different in the, the tax day hashtag that you saw that was trending on Twitter. Kamala Harris said that the average tax refund is down $170 compared to last year. Let's call the president's tax cut what it is, a middle class tax hike to line the pockets of the already wealthy corporations and the 1%. So one of two things is happening here. Either Kamala Harris does not understand how taxes work and has a questionable understanding of basic math, or she is intentionally lying. Now, personally, I tend to lean more towards the second half because I don't think that Kamala Harris is just a, a clueless goober like people like Debbie Washerman Schultz or Cory Booker. I think that she actually is pretty intelligent. She's wrong, but she is a little bit more intelligent. So I tend to think more that she's lying about this and she's intentionally trying to mislead people. Because here's the issue with that. How much you are paying in taxes is not measured by how much you get on your tax refund. That doesn't make any difference. It doesn't matter how much the return is as long as you're paying less in the first place. And the thing is, you have to keep, think about it this way too. Your refund is your money. Your taxes are your money. And when they give you back a refund, that is money that the IRS has held interest-free for the entire year over the course of you making money off of your employment and they give it back to you. That's your money. And so when they give that money to you, A, they're giving you your money back, and B, they're giving you money that they were holding. So if you're getting less money back, that means they were holding on to less of your money. That is a good thing. And it's just so hilarious that Kamala Harris is trying to deceive people like this, and unfortunately there's a lot of people that are falling for it. You saw how many likes and retweets this thing had. 
there are a lot of people that see that and are like, you know what? My refund was less. She's right. Trump's screwing me. The GOP is screwing me. I got less money back. This was just a tax hike. This was just a tax cut for the wealthy. Everybody else, it was a tax hike. No, it wasn't a tax hike. They took less of your money to begin with. But anyway, apparently this is something that is true because if you look, there was a article that was put out, ironically enough, by the New York Times. So the New York Times actually doing some real journalisming, which I have to admit kind of surprised me, but you know, props of the New York Times. They did an article the other day called Face It, You Probably Got a Tax Cut. And one of the things that they brought up is that there was a survey done by SurveyMonkey. I don't know how scientific this poll was, but if you look at it, you'll see in different tax brackets how much each person made and how much believed that they got a tax cut. And on just about every level, the people that believed that they got a tax cut was less than the people that actually got a tax cut. And so if you're looking at it, most of the people, they thought that their taxes either stayed the same or got bigger, but it's not true. And so there is a wild misconception about people that actually got a tax cut but believed that they didn't. And keep in mind, this is coming from the New York Times, not exactly a bastion of conservative thought. They said in this article, to a large degree, the, cap bet uh, the gap between perception and reality on the tax cuts appears to flow from a sustained and misleading effort by liberal opponents of the law to brand it as a broad middle class, class tax increase. Wow. The New York Times calling out Kamala Harris and those that oppose this tax cut as lying to the American people saying this was a tax increase for the middle class. So even the New York Times is saying, yeah, the left is full of crap. They're lying about this. And they're saying that it was a intentional and it was a sustained effort to try to mislead the public. So they're not just saying that they're lying about it because they're ignorant or they don't know any better. They're saying, oh no, they know that people are actually getting a tax cut, but there is a sustained effort to try to convince people that they did not, and that is the reason for the massive discrepancy between what people think happened and what actually did happen. It goes on a little later in this article. Uh, the Tax Cut Policy Center estimates that 65% of people paid less under the law and that just 6% paid more. The rest saw very little change to their taxes. Other analyses reach similar conclusions. The Joint Committee on Taxation, Congress's nonpartisan team of tax analysts, found that every income group would see a tax cut on average. So did the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, a left-leaning think tank that was sharply critical of the law. In fact, that group went even further. In a December, in December 2017 analysis, it found that every income group in every state would pay less on average under the law in 2019. So the New York Times is saying even this very far left-leaning group that looks at taxes is saying that every demographic, every grouping in every state, and that's significant for a reason that we'll get into in just a second, that every single grouping there actually did see a tax decrease, and this is coming from people that are liberal. So there's really just no way to deny it. This is what happens when you focus on facts and not feelings. If you follow the numbers, the tax break shows a very different reality than what the average person thinks is happening. And then they ask the question later in this article, why don't they believe it? And this is how they responded. The tax savings were relatively small for many families. However, the middle fifth of earners got about $780 tax cut last year on average, according to the Tax Policy Center. Most Americans would probably welcome $780, a $780 windfall, but in contrast to 2001, when President George W. Bush's Treasury Department mailed rebate checks to taxpayers, last year's tax cut showed up mostly in the form of lower withholding from workers' paychecks. A few extra dollars in a biweekly paycheck proved easy to miss. Moreover, as taxpayers filed in their returns, many found that they were uh, found they were due smaller refunds than in the past, 
which may have further skewed perceptions of the law. And this is where the stupid in the Daily Dose of Stupid comes in. You know, you could point to Kamala Harris, but I don't think she's stupid. I think she's just lying. Unfortunately, the stupid is in the average American people. And I hate to say that, but it's the truth. It looks like a vast majority of the American people believe that they did not get a tax cut despite the fact that they actually did. And here's the explanation for that. They're saying that because it showed up in your paycheck every week, as opposed to getting a big check at the end, and people actually getting less in their refunds at the end of the year, even though you actually kept more of your money, they're saying that it wasn't perceived that way. And I really do think that this is one of the main reasons that I really was upset with the Republicans and the way that they handled it. Because you'll remember that when this tax cut was being talked about, I said then that a 2% tax cut is something to be excited about, but it's nothing to act like you won the Super Bowl about. I mean, it's great that we got about a 2%, depending on which bracket you were in. Almost everybody got about a 2% tax cut. That's good. Appreciate that. But really, 2%, that's the best you can do? $780 a year, that's really the best that the Republicans can do when they had the House and the Senate and the presidency? 2%, that's it? I mean, the corporate tax cut was huge, and that's a good thing. But you can see why the news was like, oh, we'll see how big the corporate tax cut is getting, and then the average person, they're just getting these little bitty tax cuts. You see why this myth that these tax cuts were actually benefiting the wealthy you see how that myth was helped along by the fact that Republicans didn't make a bolder stance when it came to individual taxes? If there had been a cut of about 5 or 10%, I guarantee you this rate would not be nearly as high. Because granted, you divide $780 over 12 months, you're going to see a little bit of an increase. You're going to notice that you have a little bit more spending money. But not that much month to month. Or not that much, certainly, bi-weekly if you get paid every two weeks. But you know what they would notice? If you were doubling or tripling or quadrupling that amount? I mean, if people have an extra two hundred or an extra $2,000 a year, that they're going to pick up on. That they're going to notice. And that's why I was so incredibly critical of them being timid and afraid to actually push for a real meaningful tax reform on the individual tax side. Because I guarantee you, the GOP's numbers would be better. They'd probably even have bigger numbers in the House and bigger approval ratings if they had actually gone with a bold policy proposal like that. But because they were afraid and because they didn't want to have less money to play around with in the Congress, because let's face it, most of the Republicans are progressives. They're just progressive light. Because they were afraid of not having a big enough government to be able to help, control, help them control your life. They decided, well, we don't really want to get rid of a lot of the money. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give them just a little bitty tax cut. Something cute that they can, they can talk about. If this had been big and bold, even moderates and even some people on the left would be far more likely to understand that they actually got a tax cut. But nonetheless, that is the way that the cookie crumbles, unfortunately, that because they didn't do that, now they're facing the consequences for that, people not even appreciating that they are keeping more of their own money. And it continues on in its explanation. Most people didn't recognize the increase in take-home pay or at least didn't attribute it to a tax cut, Mr. Ringley said, an expert that they were talking on. Some of them were might, uh, some of them might realize now that they're filing their taxes, he said, but it's a little consolation to discover you received a couple thousand dollars during the year, but you already spent it. That's true, and that's one of the reasons that I really favor moving to actually paying taxes as though it were a bill. That's something that I've been in favor of for a while, and I think that that really is something that we ought to move to. I think that that would be beneficial because when people pay it throughout the year and they get a tax cut, they don't even realize that they got a tax cut because it's just more money they're keeping in their paycheck every month. If you had to actually make that check out, in other words, the government told you at the end of the month you owe X amount of dollars and you had to physically write a check for that amount at the end of every month, I guarantee you the tax rates would come down. It, it wouldn't matter if there was a Democrat in the House and the Senate and a, a Democrat in the White House. 
if you had Democrat control of those two branches of government completely, taxes would still come down because the American people would not stand for paying the obscene amount of taxes that we pay right now. I mean, when you're working until about middle of March, beginning of April, just for the government, and you're expected to live off of whatever you make the rest of the year, the American people do not stand for that. And if they realized how much they were actually paying and having to take it out of their their bank accounts or their pockets, money that they actually possessed and then had to turn over to the government, I guarantee you the way that the tax law is structured would change dramatically. And that's the reason that I actually think that we should be paying at the end of every month as opposed to doing it automatically taken out of our, our paychecks. They do that so people don't realize how much they're paying in taxes. But nonetheless, that's where we stand. And I find it incredibly disheartening that this is taking place. I do. I understand that for the GOP, it can be very disappointing to see all your hard work basically be for naught, that you're not even getting political recognition for the good that you've been doing for people. But you know what? At the end of the day, whether or not you get gratitude for it, whether or not people thank you for it, that's not really the goal. It's not. As nice as that is, at the end of the day, you did the right thing and more hardworking American families had a little bit more breathing room when it came to their taxes. And that ought to be rewarded in and of itself. I would have been in favor of you giving them a little more breathing room, letting them keep a little more of their own money. But this was a step in the right direction and this was a good thing. And whether or not you get political credit for it, it's good that you did the right thing. These tax cuts are a good thing for the American people and that in and of itself ought to be celebrated at least a little bit. <laughs> Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.